Let us bow our heads for a word of prayer. Heavenly Father, in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ, we have gathered here today to worship, to praise, to extol you. There is no God above thee. There is no God beside thee. You live forever. You reign supreme. You hold the world in your hand. The nations are as a drop in the bucket. You comprehend the dust and the sand of the earth. Lord, you have given us life. You have given us strength. And we pause today to offer a reasonable sacrifice unto you. To glorify you. To let you know that we thank you and appreciate you and what you have done for us. There is none like you, Jesus. And so we invite you to rest in our midst today. We pray that you send the cool breeze of your spirit. But at the same time, allow the fire of the Holy Ghost to burn. We pray, Lord Jesus Christ, that you move upon every person in this place. You know what we need. You even know what we want. We pray that your will be done today. We bind every work and every power of the enemy. Have free course here today. If someone isn't saved, Lord, save them. If someone isn't healed, Lord, heal them. Lord, if someone needs deliverance, deliver them. Body, mind, soul, or spirit. We still believe in miracles. We still believe that you can make a change immediately. And so we invite you in our midst today. Receive the songs that we sing, Lord. We sing the claps, O oh God, the movement, O oh God, our attention, our focus. Receive everything that we offer to you today as a sacrifice to you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.
Aleluya. Yeah. 
shock of broken this morning. I don't know about you, but I know I'm standing here in freedom. Because God restored my soul. So this morning, I'm going to feel the same way about it. I'm asking to get up and give some nice testimony. Let us know that your shackles are broken. And testify in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Another time, just yeah. here a couple of weeks ago, and it, um, he gave Bless me the safe Bless traveling mercy yes. of the highways yes. and byways on yet another trip. And not only this time, but the whole family was here. And I praise him for that. I praise him for the event on yesterday. Amen. I praise him Amen. for my new daughter-in-law. I praise him this time with the family. I praise him because God is just good. Oh, He's yeah. just good. He cannot tell it all. But I just thank and praise him. I just wanted to stand and give him the glory because he deserves glory. Yes, yes, yes. My house is filled with glory. Amen. 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 I give honor to Pastor Graham, to my mother, to everyone, just the church at large. I praise God this morning, first and foremost, for knowing Jesus and the pardon of my sins. I praise God for the baptism in Jesus' name, yeah, with the infilling of the gift of the Holy Ghost, yeah. with the sign of speaking in other tongues. Yeah. I got that old-time religion, yeah, yeah, yeah. just like the Bible says, I praise God because I have the salvation that is a keeper oh, yes. from the snares of the enemy, the yes. enticement oh, right. of the world, yes. from the yes. wild, yes. hallelujah, of the devil that tries to snatch my soul. I praise God yes. because I got that power yes. that was given on the day of yes. the yes. Yes. This morning, I would not oh, take anything for my salvation. I praise God Amen. for his healing. You know, I have been plagued with back pain for I don't know how long. And I praise God that when I went to the doctor, they have officially diagnosed it as arthritis. And you know that means that there's not anything that you can do. You're going to have good days and you're going to have bad days. Thus say the doctor. But you know, I put this condition before the Lord. Yes. Uh -huh. And although I may have to take a little pill every now and then, I am just claiming my deliverance. Amen. I am claiming my healing. But what is keeping me is that blessed scripture that says, by and by, when the trumpet sounds, you know, I'm just waiting for that new body. Yes. Because Amen. I know that there is going to be one day that the pain in this old body will just be no more. God said he's going to wipe away every tear. God said he's going to make those things yes, that are yes, perfect yes. straight. Yes. God said I will just be Hallelujah. able, hallelujah, yes. to praise him all day. So if I don't get pain free down here, yes. I know I'll get it in heaven. Yes. I want to encourage you yes. in these last and evil days to keep your hand in God's hand. Yes. There is nothing in this world that is worth your soul. Right. Better okay. days are coming. Yes. Hallelujah. Yes. Better days are coming yes. by your God. Amen. I love the Lord deep down in my soul. Yes. Been saying now almost 33 years. Would not take anything for That's Jesus. Right. That's right. I know him as a provider. Yes. On yes. one income, I know him as a healer. Yes. I know yes. him as a way maker. I know him yes. as a lawyer.
because I know God to be all of those things and even more. I think it's very praise Him. We got had experience. I had a couple of different experiences traveling for work, and I thank God because He allows me to see the areas that still need work and in the areas that I've come so far from. Amen. That God doesn't allow me to just sit and be stagnant in, in my walk with That's Him, right. but He's always revealing and He's always showing. And even this morning yes. in the Sunday school for us to unfold what it truly means you to praise Him. Him. I know. praise Him because only God is truly a teacher in the yes. way that He functions. Yes. Because even in my personal life, yes. I know yes. I don't pray enough, I don't read my Word enough. Yes. But there's peaks and valleys, and I thank and praise Amen. God that He allows me to come into the sanctuary yes. and that He's yes. given me a thirst for yes. Him yes. that I won't be late, yes. that I won't, yes. that I'm fresh, that I, it doesn't matter what time I went to sleep the night before. Yes. That I'm gonna be in the sanctuary. Uh, pick my sister up, and I just 
things are that we're able to sit down and talk with one another. I don't want to take it for granted because it's been, it's been a long time. And I yeah. just believe that God worked it out because he knew that I wanted to, to see her. And he brought her to, to my place of work. And even just, I, I just thank God for that. I didn't ask, you know, Lord, bring my sister to school. But I just thank God that he, he, he knew yes, yes, where my yes. heart was at. He, yes, he just yes, brought yes, that out yes, for me. Yes, yes, and yes. while I was talking to her and the things that she's doing, I was, nervous about her being at UMass Amherst, knowing it's a party school, and just being able to talk to her, that she's taking her education seriously, Amen. that it's a semester with a 4.0, I know that that is not easy, Amen. and I even thank God as I hear her talking about the Lord just kind of showed yeah. me that when I was in school, the things that I was studying, wanting to help women that were victims of violence, seeing my sister doing the same type of thing, even though the Lord allowed me to come into the education field, which yeah. I'm so thankful for, I was also able to see that if God had an interview when I was in college, I wouldn't be married to this fine brother right here. And I used to be because I know who I used to be. And when we see the song of God breaking chains and God delivering people, I know what I used to do. I stepped up my closet. I just think God that in spite of my sin, that God is still able to use me. That God is able to use me. And I just thank God that he's able to use me. And I just thank God that he's able to use me. And I just thank God that he's able to use me. Thank you. 
worship experience because if you weren't here, we would be by ourselves. We would still have church, but it just wouldn't be the same without you. And so we pray that you come again in Jesus' name. John chapter number 21. I will be reading out of the English Standard Version for context today. Verse number one reads, After this, Jesus revealed himself again to the disciples by the Sea of Tiberias. And he revealed himself in this way. Simon Peter, Thomas called Didymus, that means twin, Nathaniel of Cana in Galilee and the sons of Zebedee. And two other disciples were together. And Simon Peter said unto them, I am going fishing. And they said to him, we'll go with you. This is after Jesus had died and rose from the dead. They were just going on about their business. And the Bible says they caught, they went out and got into the boat. And that night they caught nothing. In verse number four, just as the day was breaking, so they fished all night. Jesus stood on the shore. Yet the disciples did not know that it was Jesus. Jesus said to them, children, not a derogatory term, but that's a term of endearment. Do you have any fish? And they answered, no. And he said, cast the net on the right side of the boat and you'll find some. I'm not going to have time to preach everything here, but notice he said the right side. When Jesus gives specific instructions, it's best to follow them. If they would have put the net on the left side, they wouldn't have gotten anything. And so they cast it, and now they were not able to haul it in because of the quantity of the fish. That disciple whom Jesus loved, therefore, said to Peter, you see, that's John, it is the Lord. And when Simon Peter heard it was the Lord, he put on his outer garment. Your Bible, the King James said, for he was naked. It wasn't, didn't mean that he didn't have any clothes on. It meant that he didn't have all of the garments on. So if you didn't have on your suit jacket right now, brother, they'd say you were naked. So he put on his fisher's coat or the outer garment, for he was stripped. He was working. And he threw himself into the sea. You can turn the high down. And the other disciples came in the boat, dragging a net full of fish. And they were not far from land. They were about a hundred yards away. And when they got to the land, they saw a charcoal fire. Jesus was having a fish fry. And the fish was laid out. He had bread. Jesus said to them, bring some of those fish you caught. I got some on the grill, but bring me some more. And Simon Peter went on the ship and he hauled the net ashore. And they were full of large fish. 153 of them. And although there were so many, the net was supposed to break. The net wasn't torn. And Jesus said to them, come and dine. Let's have breakfast. Now, none of the disciples dared to ask him, Who are you? They knew it was the Lord. So Jesus came, he took bread, and he gave it to them, and they ate it with the fish. This was the third time that Jesus was revealed to the disciples after he was raised from the dead. Our text gives us many lessons today. I'm not going to preach all of them. There's about six to seven messages within these 14 verses. But we're just going to look at verse number seven that says that when Peter was told that it was the Lord Jesus Christ, that he threw himself into the sea. Our thought today is jump in. Before we go a little deeper, we need to understand the frame of a few things from our text that are applicable to Peter 
and they are applicable to us. The first is Jesus will reveal himself to you. In verse number four, just as the day was breaking, they survived the night and they made it to the day. Jesus stood on the shore for all to see. He knows where we are. He knows what we're doing. And many people say that God doesn't talk anymore, but I challenge you to slow your pace. I challenge you to turn the volume of life down and to put down the busyness of business and we will see God. Amen. The next thing to understand for the frame is that Jesus will speak to you. Just in case we can't see him, they couldn't make out who Jesus was. There were a few disciples together, about seven of them or so, but only one disciple. The Bible says it was the disciple that Jesus loved. Everyone is not in the same proximity of Jesus. Some people are closer to Jesus than others. It's just the fact of the matter. But the person closer to Jesus that was able to identify him, he said, listen, I see him. But before he said that, what did Jesus say? He asked them a question. He said, do you have any fish? You all see that in verse number five? He said, children, do you have any fish? And so when you don't see him or can't see him, he'll speak to you. The primary way that Jesus speaks is through preaching. In fact, 1 Corinthians 1 and 21 says, It pleased God by the foolishness of preaching to save them that believe. The reason why churches are full but many people are sleeping today is because they don't understand the power and necessity of preaching. The reason why there's an attack and many preachers fall because we make mistakes like everyone else is because the enemy knows that preaching is what God uses to save them that are lost. The reason why people are skeptical and cynical nowadays about this Bible because it's what God uses to save people from sin. He's not cracking the sky and kicking doors open and talking to you and me like he did Moses. He left this Bible, which is a testament, to give us a testimony that God is not dead, but he's still alive. Not just because I can feel him, but because I can hear him and I can see him. In fact, Romans 10 and 14 tells us that how can they hear except there be a preacher? Everybody needs a preacher. And YouTube doesn't count. Joyce Meyer doesn't count. Tony Evans doesn't count. Know them that labor among you. They can compliment, but they are not the main course. Because what God has for us, he has planted us in a place to receive it. Let the church say amen. Amen. The third frame that we need to understand is that Jesus will provide a witness. So we've been in sin. We read the song and Jesus revealed himself and we couldn't see him. We couldn't hear him. But here's what happens when we don't see him and we don't hear him. He's still gracious. Look at number verse number seven. The disciple that was closer to Jesus said to Peter, it is the Lord. In other words, that's an undeniable prompt. You know how you've had some times when you think something, you should do something, but you're not quite sure. And it stays on you. Then someone that doesn't know you or the situation prompts you. And like, how, that's what you call an undeniable prompt from God. That God uses people to speak to us. And so here John was, was saying that, listen, that is Jesus. Now, I like Peter, y'all, because he was like some of us. He was impetuous. He was uh, uh, he, he was the first to go after things. If you read the scripture, if God asked, Jesus asked a question, he was the first to answer. He was bold and somewhat brazen. He was instinctive, and 
he had the habitual impulse to jump in. And perhaps he deduced that he could get to Jesus faster than the boat because the blessing had slowed the boat down. I don't know about you, but I like those kind of blessings where, where I can't, I don't have room to move because they've overtaken me. But see, they had 153 large fish on the boat. And Peter, with his, his aggressive personality, when he noticed that that was Jesus, he had a choice. Do I value the blessing or do I want to see where the blessing came from? And he said, listen, there's 153 fish and there's about seven or so of us. I got to jump in because I want to get to Jesus. Yes. Anybody want to get yes. to yes. Jesus? Yes. Thank God for the car. I thank God for the house. I thank God for the clothes. I thank God for the job. But I thank God for Jesus. Yes. And so yes. he forgot. He didn't forget. I, like some of us, sometimes I forget that it's not about the blessing all the time, but it's about where the blessing comes from. And for Peter, it wasn't the fish that was the blessing. Hallelujah. It was Jesus. For some churches, more about resources of blessings than the source of the blessing. For some, it's about what we can get from God opposed to how close we can get to God. Mm -hmm. and, 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 and when Jesus shows up, it's important to get to him as fast as you possibly can. Peter, in this case, he said, listen, I'm not presentable to my Lord. So he threw on his fisher's coat. And some say he waited in the water to help the boat get there. Some say he swam. Listen, some of us can't walk 100 yards without being tired. Peter may have swam 100 yards. He may have ran in the water. We don't know what he did, but he got to Jesus because he knew that this same God that gave 153 fish, if he gave us fish, he has to have some fish somewhere. So it's not about the fish. It's about the fisherman. And Jesus is the ultimate fisherman. But there's a problem. Peter encounters the problems just like we do. And the problem is that there will be obstacles between us and Jesus. There will always be something between you and Jesus. For some it's past trauma. For some it's present failure. And for others it's future fear. There's always something. There's sin. There's a gap that separates humanity and Jesus. And him dying was to bridge that gap. Yes, yes. And so there always seems to be something there. Whatever that obstacle is, you and I have the power to overcome it. We simply have to jump in. For Peter, it represented literal and the figure, the, 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 the structure of water. That was between him and Jesus. And I don't know what's between you and Jesus, but whatever it is, get through it. Get around it, get under it, get over it. Yes, Just yes. get to Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. And so that's what Peter did. It's an important concept to understand that just because I'm blessed, it doesn't mean I'm with Jesus. There's plenty of people that have more money than us. There's plenty of people that have bigger houses than us, maybe even better health than us. But it doesn't mean they're more blessed than us. It doesn't. In fact, when you look at the 43 kings of Israel in the Old Testament, praise God, one of the most evil kings lived the longest. And some of the more godly kings like Josiah and Hezekiah lived the shortest. So don't use temporal things as a measuring stick of the blessings and the mercy and the grace of God. Look at where you are now. Jesus is in the church. Jesus is in your prayer closet. Jesus is in the Bible. Jesus is in obedience. And if you have those 
things, then you are blessed. What did Jesus tell the 70 disciples? I feel something. He told them, listen, you've already casted out demons and you've done all these things. And they came back happy and rejoicing because they, they saw the product, praise God, of Jesus. But he said, listen, why are you so excited? You need to be excited that your name is written in the book of life. Don't you know that when Jesus pulls out his pen and writes your name in the book of life, no obstacle, no demon, no sickness, no job issue, no marital issue, no financial issue can take your name. At the end of the day, if I'm broke, if I'm busted and disgusted, if I have Jesus, then I have comeback power. If I have Jesus, I have the force that when the devil throws me against the ground, I'm going to bounce back up and I'm going to go higher. Science tells me with every force there's an equal to opposite force of reaction. But in the spirit, you go higher. You go farther. You do greater. When you, Didn't he say greater work shall you do? And we sit scared and hesitant. But today is the day to jump in. Hey, the problem can't get you down. You are more than a conqueror. Don't just be happy with the resources that Jesus gives you, but get to the source. I don't mean to do this, but you know, you see the commercial, the Lucky Charms commercial. How back in the 80s they would play it, and the little leprechaun would try to find the rainbow to get to the pot of gold because the concept was then they'd be rich. Well, Jesus is the number one, the author of the rainbow. Don't let these people fool you that are running around here talking about pride. Listen, I, I'm openly holy. I'm out of the closet. I'm a Christian of the Almighty God. And you can steal the rainbow and make it what you want to make it. But God said it's a covenant that not only will he not destroy the earth again, but the next time he does destroy it, it's going to be with fire. You speak damnation on your soul using a symbol of God for an expression of demonic sin. But for those of us that have made it to the end of the rainbow, and the day we tarry for the Holy Ghost, and we've experienced the almighty power of Jesus, I bet you're lucky child. You found Jesus, and it wasn't luck, it wasn't a charm, it was Jesus who before the foundation of the world had you in mind. So I'm happy about the source, but I can confess that sometimes I'm not happy. And the Lord showed me yesterday. I got on my knees and had to pray because a spirit of fear came over me on something. And the spirit spoke to me when I was praying. He said, what you feel is what some of the saints feel. They're walking around fearful of things, fearful of their past, fearful of the future, fearful of what they used to do, fearful and bound. Yeah, you're blessed. You have 153 fish, but Jesus said, I want you to be more blessed. I want you to have more freedom. I want you to have more power. I want you to have more anointing. I want you to have an abundance. And so you have to realize you got to get closer to the source. Because the closer you get, the better things are. Doesn't mean life will be over and you won't have problems. But what the writers say, Jesus is the center of my joy. All of my joy is centered on Jesus. You're my hope. You're my song. You're my reason for living. You love him enough to jump in. If I have to climb the highest mountain, if I have to go through the lowest valley, I just want to get to Jesus. But in America, it's about the food. Don't raise your hand. Who thought about where they're going after church to eat? Don't raise your hand. 
Amen. Who's thinking about the playoff games? And who's thinking about who I got to check my post and see how many people like it? But when was the time that it was about to choose? Jesus. And Peter said, I just want to get to Jesus. And so I'm almost done. But here's a specific word for someone. The God is telling us that if you have been hesitant about something, someone has been hesitant, maybe it's something in your life. I don't know, maybe it's a decision you have to make. You're not quite sure. I have news for you. If Jesus is on the other side of the shore. Jump in. If you're not sure it's Jesus, then wait a little while for someone to say something to you or provide you with a divine prompting. But if you see Jesus, you don't even have to know how to swim. Didn't Peter walk on water? He said, listen, I don't know how deep it is. I'm not going to drop the anchor to measure where we are. I'm not going to check for rocks to see if I don't cut my I, I don't care about eels and snakes and lobsters. I, I gotta get to Jesus. And if he's there, he'll make a way for me to get there. You don't have to worry. If you focus on Jesus, he'll let you get there. And look at Jesus. Look at Jesus. They out for fish. I like to think that. They out for fish. And Jesus done lit a fire. Look at this concept. They out at night, fishing all night. They break. Jesus done got firewood. He got him some lighted fluid. He got him some matches. He lit the fire, but hold up. How does he get fish? So he has a grill going. And then he got fish. Well, he knows they out there all night looking for fish. He like, like he do is find me, I'm ready. He don't caught the fish. He don't clean the fish. He don't cook the fish. Don't you know Jesus done caught your blessing? He done clean your blessing. He done cooked your blessing. He just saying, pull up a chair and sit down and get ready to eat. I don't know about you, but I need some more blessings. Not just the resources, but the source of Jesus Christ. Anybody know what I'm talking about? So you say, well, okay, preacher. Well, how do I jump in? Well, I'm glad you asked. How you jump in? You got to get to where Jesus is. You say, well, preacher, I'm already where Jesus is. I'm glad you said that. Then you stay where Jesus is. All right, preacher. Well, I got to where Jesus is. I'm going to stay where Jesus is, but I still don't quite know where Jesus is. Isn't he omnipresent? Yes, he is. He's everywhere at the same time and miss me with all the Google talk. If you take an inhale and an exhale, you did not see what you just breathed in, but it's still real. So that air is omnipresent, the same way God is. But you say, well, preacher, but how do I get there? Hallelujah. Let me digress. We believe that God and Jesus are one. Let me just say that. The Bible says, I and my Father are one. It expresses itself differently sometimes, but the Bible does tell us that in this dispensation, there's none other name given under heaven among men whereby we must be saved. That's why we in our prayers with the seal of approval from God himself in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. That's why you say, Lord, let your will be done. That's why we say, hallelujah, to God be the glory because Jesus is the glory of God the Father. It's all in Jesus. I don't understand all of the concepts but let me tell you this. When you drink your lemonade after church you're probably going to have ice in it. Well what is water? H2O. And if you freeze water it's still H2O but it's 
it's also in a frozen form. And then if I melt the water, it comes back to what? It becomes condensation or steam. But it's still an expression of H2O. Well, guess what? Jesus, hallelujah, hallelujah, is like the ice that makes everything cold, makes everything sweeter, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. makes everything better. God is like the water that existed before the foundation of the world who just spoke and the steam is like the Holy Ghost the spirit that changes the environment you got the Holy Ghost when you go in a situation you're not supposed to be a thermometer you're supposed to be a thermostat All right. you adjust the temperature and the climate on your job in the power of the Holy Ghost Everybody can be mad, but you can go in there and not open your mouth. Just have the joy bells ringing in your soul, and it can change the environment. Oh, yeah. That's what happens when you get close to Jesus. And so what do I do when I get to Jesus? and I stay where he is it's plain and simple that Jesus is in the church everybody needs a church because the church you see God is omnipresent yeah he's everywhere but he doesn't express himself everywhere he's not going in the crack house and doing crack with people he's not going down the river here and putting opiates in his van he's not doing he's there goodness and mercy and grace is there but when he reveals himself, he reveals himself to people that are in his church, in his kingdom. I have news for you. Jesus is not coming back for a person. He's not coming back for an ethnicity. He's not coming back for a gender. He's not coming back for a particular country. He's coming back for a church. That's what without spot, that's without wrinkle, that's without blemish, you better pull your spiritual tie out and get every spot out of your garment, pull the holy iron out and steam that thing, cause God is looking for a holy people, and when you jump in and get close to Jesus, you have no choice but to be holy, you don't have to worry, I don't know if I can do it, I'm not sure if I can do it. Listen, be where you are right now and God will bless you. And I know there's some people that are other places that may not have a church and that's why the internet is good. But if you have a church that has been established by God with a man from God, then open your ears and hear what thus says the Lord Jesus Christ through the church. Let everyone say yeah. Yeah. And so yeah, Jesus is in the church. That's why they tell me that right now in this area, that we are probably the not out of the, 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 the least Bible-minded major cities in the world or the country. They say this area that you and I live in, we're like number two or three on the list. That's why you're special. You could be out there with everybody else, but you have a mind to be near Jesus. Do you realize that they say Massachusetts, Connecticut, and Rhode Island in upstate New York, we're the, we're the worst in the country. People don't want Jesus. They don't want the word. They don't want to go to church. They're just CEO Christians or CEO people. They go to church on Christmas. They go to church on Easter and other special services. But how many thank God that they have a mind to show up where Jesus is? Don't take that for granted because the blessing it's not just the blessing, but it's where the blessing comes from. So saints of the almighty God, don't be like some of us when we go to a pool. I don't like to just jump in the pool because I got to get my body temperature adjusted. Since the Molly's a lifeguard, stop shaking your head at me. I'm not like that. I was in train. So you know how I do? I get my toe in. I get my toe in. I gotta get my toe used to it a little bit. And 
then I gotta let it come up to my ankle bone a little bit. And I just gotta take it slow. And I can't stand when I'm about knee high. And some little kid that happens to be mine looking like you comes and throws water on me. I'm like, you better hold you better. I can't chase him. I can't get to her because it's too cold. And I'm stuck there. Listen, don't wait for your blessing. Jump in. See first. Head first. Body first. Go to the edge and say, Lord, I don't know what's down. Where we need him to be, but if I jump in, 
in and allow the, 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 the myself to give the effort, God's not going to make me come to prayer. God's not going to make me fast. God's not going to make me read the Sunday school lesson. God's not going to make me pay attention to go to bed early enough to be on time. He's not going to do all that. He gave you an alarm clock for that. He gave right. you a car for that. He's not, he's not an I God. He's not an I God, I God, iPhone. He's not all that. He's not a Sam God. He, he listen, he's not all these devices. We have those things to help us get closer to God. So now I can set my alarm clock. I can set my phone. Right. I can set my TV. My car will even crank up by itself if I program it to be at church on time to give God the praise. What if God comes back for us and he's like, oh, no, I can't pick you up because you was late. Didn't those, didn't those um, virgins yeah. the five that got to That's go back with the ground? Wasn't they like this? They had something. They they were they were blessed. But the five wise went to the source and got more. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I got something in my tank, but I want you to fill me up. And then I'm ready. We're called to be filled, filled, filled with Jesus. And the father said, hey, Jesus, we want to go back. Where's you, Jesus? It was a parable. Jesus, we want to go back. He was like, now the door is closed. Kind of like that curfew some of us had where the door was closed. You was on the porch. The only issue with that is the door opened in the morning. Met with, met with a switch or a bell. The difference with this is the door doesn't open. Not to heaven, but the door to hell does. And so we give God praise because between us and Jesus is the simple step of jumping in and making our way to the Hallelujah. The Lord whipped me a little bit this week with this message because I got problems, I got issues, and that, that can dominate your mind. The next promotion, what am I going to do? We talked about it in Sunday school. Give us our... Daily. His brother broke it down. Y'all come to Sunday school. His brother broke down the word daily. He was like, listen, we pray for three days, three weeks, a month, a year. He said, no, no. Pray for the day. Glory to that's God. Word. The daily bread. That's, that's, that, that's Jesus giving us what we need right. every daily. single day. And I think about all the issues. We got some distractions, y'all. But at the end of the day, think about this. I want you to think for a moment. What a blessed assurance. Yes. And despite everything in our lives, good, bad, up and down, that if we are to take our last breath, Hallelujah. we're actually going. Yes. Hallelujah. When will that be enough, Graham? Amen. Amen. Yeah, the bills are there. Yeah, the, the questions are there. But when will salvation glory to God? Wasn't that the song we sang? What was that song? I'm going to let you go in a minute. The song here we sang, Your Love, right? What does this song say? It's because I've been touched and healed. I've been made free. I have. Do you realize that that's a blessing in and of itself? That liberty and freedom in Jesus Christ. That's why when things get tough, you don't drink. Amen. That's why when things get difficult, you don't roll up a blunt. All That's right. why when you feel discouraged, you don't do something reckless because you have hope uh -huh. beyond the situation. That if I can just make it through the night, even if I don't have anything in my neck, somehow, yeah. if I make it through the night, we may endure the night. But if I can make it to the morning, I believe that I'll see Jesus on the other oh, side oh, of midnight. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Somebody needs to make it to the other side of midnight. It's 11.59 and 59 seconds. Hang in there. One more second. And Jesus is going to turn it around. Hallelujah. 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 H